By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to position and align objects to surfaces using Blender's geometry nodes. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is grab the starter file from my Gumroad. The link is in the description. And open the file up, and we should land in this layout here. And you can see that we've got, uh, we have this plane that just has some distortion on it using geometry nodes, just some noise distortion to make it look like waves, just a basic shader, uh, a backdrop. We've got a camera, so you can go into the camera view if you hold tilde, go into camera, got the camera, and we've got this ship. I'll go into layout mode here, and but there you go. All right, so we'll go into solid mode. So we've got this ship, and what we want to do is align this ship on the surface of the waves. And as these waves move, because they're animated through geometry nodes, as the waves move, we want the ship to rise up and down as it goes over a crest and comes down to a trough, um, but not only be displaced uh, vertically, but also rotate so that it's aligned to like the angle of these waves so that it looks like the boat is actually on the waves. And we can do that with geometry nodes. So this lesson assumes some very basic knowledge of geometry nodes, not much. Um, I'll walk you through, this is for the waves, don't worry about that. I'll walk you through it step by step though. We'll break it down to chunks and solve one problem at a time. All right, so let's select the ship and we need to add a geometry node onto the ship. So to do that, a geometry node is just like a modifier. So we can add it in the modifier stack here by clicking this wrench if you don't have it selected. Click Add Modifier, select Geometry Nodes. Or alternatively, you can click with the object you have selected, you can click uh, New in the Geometry Node layout up here. So now you can see that it made this new Geometry Node modifier and we can give it a name. We'll call it like Align to Surface. So the geometry that's coming in in this group input that is the ship's geometry and then it's coming out so the geometry comes in we modify it and then the geometry comes out and continues down the modifier stack there's no other modifiers here but if there were the additional modifiers would continue to modify this, this mesh's geometry uh, you can see that if you disconnect that line the ship totally disappears because now the geometry is not being passed through. So how do we figure out what's below the ship so that we can reposition, reposition the ship on top of the wave? Which, by the way, if you press the space bar to play, you can see how these waves are rippling. This is done uh, in geometry nodes just with some noise and some offsets some pretty basic stuff. So we want to detect where the top of the wave is, where the top of the water is, and then move the ship down to that point. And to do this, we can actually use what is called a raycast. And I can pull up the raycast node here. It's super, it can be super intimidating. There's like all of these inputs, some options here and some outputs, but it's actually pretty basic. So don't be intimidated. Um, this is a fundamental concept in game engines, in 3D, is casting a ray and then getting information about where that ray might hit or intersect. An array is really just a line. That's, that's all it is. With this input here, this target geometry, we have to tell the geometry nodes what geometry we intend to hit. In this case, it's the waves. The ship is going to you can think of it as sending out like a laser beam uh, at some point and seeing what and where it gets hit. So we're going to send out a laser beam from the bottom of the ship down to the waves. So we need to be able to uh, get some information from the wave geometry. So as you can see, if you pull in a mesh from the outliner here, we'll get this object info node and that will let us access the the waves geometry, all right? So we're targeting the waves. Target geometry, uh, at first I was confused. I thought target geometry was like 
the geometry that is doing the targeting, but it's actually the geometry you're shooting the ray to, that you're casting the ray to. All right. And we'll set this to relative because we want to work as far as like the ship relative to the waves or vice versa. All right, so now we've got um, the target geometry specified. We can cast a ray. By default, the direction of the ray is going to be straight down, x, y, z axis. So negative one is just a normalized, so just a vector of length one. It would go just straight down. So we're just going to cast a ray straight down. And the length is 100 meters, which is actually like super huge, which we don't need. We can like shorten this ray later and uh, figure out like exactly what we, we might need for our situation. But for now, we'll leave it default. So really, that's it. There's not a lot to that getting the setup as far as casting the ray. The bulk of the exercise is dealing with the information that the ray cast gives us. In this case, you can see the several different outputs, uh, output fields. We're only interested in a couple of these. And is hit is a pink diamond. So it's a field, a Boolean field. It will tell us if the ray hit the surface or not. Hit position is a vector field, uh, the purple diamond. And this will give us the position that the ray touched the surface. And the hit normal will also give us the information of the normal of the surface that the ray hit as well. And I can draw that out really easily. If we cast a ray to this surface that has this normal, right? Because the normal is perpendicular to the surface. And if we cast a ray down and it hits the surface here, we'll know the distance. It is really hard to draw with the mouse. We'll know the distance of that ray to this point, the position, and we'll also know this vector, this this normal. So it's super handy. It gives a lot of a lot of information: uh, the distance, the normal, where, if it actually hit, and we'll ignore this attribute in this exercise. So let's do this. The first thing we can do is let's offset the ship. All right. So let's assume for now that we do hit the surface of the water. We can get the distance from, from the ship to the water. Although, now I think that there is another thing we need to do. Um, by default, this will actually, the ray cast will actually uh, cast a ray from every point of this mesh. That's not what we want, actually. We want to specify exactly where the ray is cast from, uh, specifically the origin of the ship here. So to do that, we need to know the location, this origin's location, so that we can put that into the source position, as in where, and notice this is uh, a field, a vector field, where this ray should come out of. This orange dot right here is what I'm thinking, the origin of the ship. So to do that, it's kind of like object info. We can delete it if, or uh, duplicate it with shift D if we want. And for the object, though, we can do ship. There's another thing. If you shift A and do self, there's a self object. And so self refers to the object that has this geometry node on it, in, in this case, the ship. So we'll plug that into the object here. I'm pretty sure this would be the exact same as uh, specifying the ship. But I don't want to specify the ship because we can make this geometry node reusable for any object in the future. If we put the ship in here, it won't be reusable, if that makes sense. But if we use self, then any object that you apply this geometry node to in the future can just reference its location using self object location. So let's plug that into the source position. All right, now we're set up where we can use this raycast. Similarly too, actually, now that I'm talking about it, um, this waves is in programmer terms, hard-coded. And if we want to use this to detect some other surface, say a hill or an asteroid or something like that with some other project, we'll have to come in and change this within the geometry node itself. So we can actually change it so that it can be specified uh, within the geometry node modifier in the modifier stack. And if we X this and drag this orange 
uh, circle orange dot out to a group input. Now, if you don't see this panel here, you can press N to bring the panel up. Now we have this object right here in the geometry node modifier, where we can actually specify the object that we want to target. In this case, we can rename it by double clicking object and name it target, which changes the um, field here or the attribute here or the input rather, and it's of type object. You can give it a description if you like, um, as like a hint in the future. I think you just give it a description and hover over in the modifier. You can see the description there. I'm just gonna leave that blank for now for simplicity. And that should be good. I'm gonna leave that open actually, because we'll use that a bit more in the future. So now we can specify, we want to target the waves. Okay, so this is using this input is a way that you can make this this entire geometry node uh, reusable for other objects, for other projects. All right, so now we are set up for the ray cast. So it casts out a ray, it hits some position on the surface. We need to offset the ship. We need to lower the ship down some distance so that it uh, sits on the surface where that ray hit. So we get this output, this hit position, and what we can do is do a tiny bit of math, not too much, it's not too hard. If we take that vector and we're only interested in the Z component, again, because we're casting straight down in the Z axis. So that'll give us a length in the Z axis. Uh, remember a vector has three or more, usually three or four um, values. In this case, it's the third value and we can grab that third value or grab the, the Z value using a separate separate XYZ node. Okay. So now this hit position comes into the separate XYZ and we only want to deal with this value here coming out of the, the Z, the Z output. And for that, using that Z value, we can transform the geometry of the ship. Okay. That we just want the Z axis. So if we do a combine XYZ, and make sure that the z goes into the z input z output to the z input now this vector the result of this vector is i can just name it it's zero zero and then the original z value okay so if we plug that into the translation now it will move the ship the amount of the ray the distance of the ship to the surface and this geometry here needs to come in here. And then this should plug back out. So there you go. So now you can see that the ship has been moved down to the, the top of the surface of the waves. There's kind of a, a bit of a problem though. You can see here that it's the very, very top. Because the origin, if I turn off the modifier, the origin is at the very bottom of the ship. So you can honestly, you could move the origin by going into this options here, clicking origin, and then moving the origin up at some point, maybe there. And then when you reapply the modifier, now the boat sits a little more in the waves. Um, that's kind of finicky though. If you want to get it right, you have to come in here, make sure that you turn this off and on, depending on if you no longer want to affect only the origins. So there's a different way. Let's undo that. There's a different way that we can achieve this. And that's in the geometry nodes. So what I want to do here is just take this transform geometry. And at the very start, as this geometry comes in, I want to get some kind of offset here. So a translation, um, re enable that there. And it's going to say we should be sitting right on top of the wave, which I think we are. So if we give it a translation here in the Z direction, we can just fiddle this dial as we like. So it sits more in the water. Remember, it's not aligned to the surface of the wave yet, so it looks a little odd. But we can just tweak this value a bit to push it down further into the water. Uh, maybe like a negative 0.8. Okay, now Again, I don't want to have to come into the geometry node necessarily. So if we drag this, actually, yeah, if we drag from translation out and let's do a combine XYZ, 
and make this a group input so that we can adjust the offset of the boat into the waves from the modifier, okay? So let's name that uh, vertical offset maybe. So that value comes into the Z, we create another vector of 00Z, zero, zero, and then we translate the ship by that vector. All right, problem solved. And if you want to keep it nice and neat and tidy, you can select the nodes here Press Control J or sh yeah, Control J, F2, and name it vertical offset. So this makes it really nice as far as keeping your your no your nodes organized. And for the same thing for over here, I might just group these with Control J. In my case, Command J, and name that Raycast. All right. Cool. So now the next problem we need to solve is how do we align the ship to the wave, to the surface of the wave? Because right now it's just bobbing up and down. It doesn't look very realistic at all. But again, the super awesome Raycast node, uh, it gives us all this awesome information. The Raycast gives us this hit normal, which is the normal of the perpendicular line from the wave. And that's how we want to align the ship. And to do that, to use that normal, we can align Euler to vector. I don't like how it wants you to punch in a socket. So just shift A, pull up the node, and plug this normal into the hit normal into this vector. And we want the ship's z-axis to be aligned with the wave. So if we select z and plug this rotation into the rotation, that was a slight shift. But now if I press play, you can see that it bobs as it's on those waves. That is, that's really cool. So why does it work? Well, the align Euler to vector node will take a vector input. In this case, it's the normal that we got from the Raycast. And I'm just trying to find a wave that's easy. That's a good wave to, to visualize. So if the vector looks like this, and our ship looks like this, the ship's Z axis, I should say, um, what this node does is it will make this vector align to this vector. That's, that's really all you need to know. Um, it doesn't move, it doesn't move the vector to the point of the vector. Uh, it just gives you the aligned vector so that now the two are parallel, essentially. Again, we have this wave offset, so we can bring the boat down a bit into the waves, or the vertical offset, rather. So that's looking pretty awesome. And honestly, to achieve this effect did not take a lot of effort. Yes, the Raycast node definitely looks uh, intimidating, um, but I mean, there's only two inputs in our case, just the two inputs, and then the two outputs, right? It's really not, it's really not too much. If you go into our camera mode, you see this nice little scene with this ship bobbing on the uh, rippling ocean waves. It's pretty sweet. I've been intimidated by geometry nodes for, I don't know, a year or two now, but Blender Pecan LA was just a couple weeks ago and was really inspiring. And uh, I decided I really need to start to learn this stuff because one, it's the future of Blender, but it's also just just crazy powerful. Um, it's, it is intimidating. I mean, it's math, it's logic, it's like, vis it's like programming. I'm a software developer by day. Um, so I really enjoy the the logic and pro and the logic and programming aspect of it. Um, but if it intimidates you as well, just take it slow. Um, find some easy projects that you can follow on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I, I plan to do more of these in the future, and I'll see you in the next one.